Thousands of people hit the streets of Washington, D.C. today. They called on lawmakers to provide more relief for hurricane-ravaged Puerto Rico. They want a larger federal response, the cancellation of the island's overwhelming debt, and the suspension of the Jones Act. That law requires goods transported from U.S. ports be carried on ships built in the United States. Two months after Maria hit, it's still a struggle to leave Puerto Rico, let alone live there. Half the island still doesn't have power. Eyewitness News reporter Josh Einiger is in San Juan tonight with a look at how people are doing just a few days before Thanksgiving. Josh. Well, Joe, things certainly have improved since you were last here two months ago during and immediately after the storm, but they have not improved fast enough for the three and a half million people who call this island home. You could see it in the power grid. There's damage obvious pretty much everywhere you look. There are lights on in this part of San Juan, but many of them, like this gas station, are powered by giant generators. Traffic lights almost universally are out, still making for really rough going. but. You don't have to look far to find the true human toll of Hurricane Maria. If there's one picture that shows the human toll of Hurricane Maria, it's this. A little girl named Sophia saying goodbye to her dad for who knows how long. Well, it's really difficult, Exile Gonzalez told me. I feel like my heart is being ripped out of my body. Sophia is heading to New York with her mom. Life in Puerto Rico just too hard. Every day when I walk through these doors, I see um, lots of families saying goodbye, hugging, crying. It is the new norm every single day. She may share the name of the storm that caused such despair, but Maria Natal is a lifeline. The Bronx-raised duty manager for JetBlue here in San Juan has been working around the clock with her team to serve as many people as possible. Tens of thousands have fled the island. As U.S. citizens, they don't need passports, so flights out are booked through the end of the year. Lights in, loaded with relief supplies. Just today, the airline received pallets of water on this flight from JFK, destined for this special storeroom for the families of the 300 JetBlue employees here, many of whom share the same dire straits as the passengers they're serving. Two months after the storm, more than half of Puerto Rico is still in the dark. It's tough to see so many people day in and day out just um, not uh, being able to uh, continue any longer without any power, any water, you know, any utilities. Back at the security checkpoint tonight, more tears, more hugs, more waves. It's going to be really hard when I leave today. And frustration. Magdalia Figueroa flew down here from the Upper West Side to convince her brother and ailing father to come back with her. But they refused. For some, the prospect of leaving is even scarier than the storm itself. What I did for both was just buy them generators, bring in extra food, gave them cash, but they just won't leave. I plan to try to come back again, you know, and see if I can convince them one more time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some can't wait to leave, others are desperate to stay, but you can see the damage just at every intersection. These traffic lights, it's not just that there's a power problem, they are physically twisted to the point where they will need to be fixed. But first, the Army Corps of Engineers has to rebuild the whole power grid. Tomorrow, we're going to Rock.